Hey everyone, and welcome to another Material UI video. Today we're going to be looking at one of the more complex components that Material UI has, and in my opinion, one of the actually, if not the most complex uh, components they have, and, and, and that is the table component. And really, what makes table so complex is not the basic use cases of the table, but the amount of things you can add to it. For example, if you were to look at this table right here, we've got pagination going on, we've got the ability to select and deselect everything, and we can pretty much filter through all this data. And if I scroll to the very bottom, it's sort of similar to the card component in the way that there are a ton of different table components that you can mix and match in your actual table for your application. In this video, we're pretty much just going to be covering the basics of table and how it works. I want to give you guys the fundamentals and then in one of my future videos, we can go more in depth on how to do things like filtering, pagination, and having selection in all of your tables. So, and once again, guys, if you enjoy the video, please, please, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Um, a lot of you guys have been leaving tons of comments, and they've been really, really kind and really nice, and a lot of great feedback. In fact, um, one of the most requested videos from uh, you guys was this table component, um, and that's why I'm doing it. So comments really help me figure out what to do, and it helps get these Material UI videos out there. I'm going to be making videos very consistently at least once a week, so um, thank you all for the support again. Um, so let's jump straight into it. This simple table, uh, let's sort of break it down and look at the code that it's made out of. So we can see here, um, it's pretty basic. We have a table on top of what it looks like a paper element. And you can see in our table, what we have here is a row that is pretty much just our header. It contains the titles for each category. And then below that, we have a bunch of rows that is pretty much just data uh, for whatever we want to show. And you can see here, um, this table is essentially just a desserts list. Uh, we have the name of the dessert, um, we have the amount of calories that dessert contains, the amount of fat in grams, carbs, and proteins. So let's open up the code and see what's happening under the hood. So first thing we can see here is that we are importing a lot of different things from table and also we're importing paper. Um, and you might be saying, okay, we're importing paper here because we have our table mounted on top of paper, and I'll go into that in just a second. It's sort of an interesting use case that they do here. One thing that's worth noting is you could import all of these from a single line by using squiggly brackets here and getting rid of the slash and then the name of the component and just importing everything from core. But as one of my viewers pointed out in one of the past videos, um, when you do that, you actually have a larger bundle size. So it's sort of a trade-off depending on what you're looking for. Um, I find it a lot more clean to import everything and I don't mind the larger bundle size, but it really depends on how you're deploying your application. But that's just something to keep in mind, especially for components that have a bunch of different um, subcomponents that is part of them. So. Let's go, go past the use styles here for a second, and let's look at the first real line of code we see. So the first thing we see is this function called create data, and this constant called rows, which is calling create data. And all that they're really doing here is they're just sort of getting their data in a format that is acceptable to their tables without making it look really ugly in their example. And we can see here, all they're passing into create data is just a bunch of information in order. So for example, we have the name of the dessert first, the amount of calories that it takes, the amount of fats, carbs, and finally proteins. And our actual data that we will be passing into the graph is this rows object, and you'll see it's actually an array of objects. This create data function is just going to return an object with the attributes name, calories, fat, carbs, and finally protein. So if you can visualize it, rows is just gonna be an array of objects and each object is going to have a name attribute which in this case would be frozen yogurt calories attribute which would be 159 um, fat etc 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 and that is how the data that is going to be passed into the table is formatted so now if we scroll down we actually get the actual uh, JSX for the table code so the first thing to note is that we're not just calling table straight up, we're actually wrapping it in something called table container, and we're passing in component equals paper. Now, if we were to look at the table container API, we can see here that all this is is pretty much just a literal container or um, defining what you want your table to be rendered on top of. And if we scroll down, we can see that it pretty much the only notable thing that it takes in, other than classes, if you wanted to pass in custom class names, um, is our components element. And our components can be any element, and 
in this example, the default is just a regular div, um, and then you can style it as such. But as we see here in the example, they're actually using the paper component. And what that means is when we render our table, it is going to be rendered on top of some paper. And that's pretty much all that is happening here. And that's why we needed to import paper from Material UI. So if you just want your table to be pretty much on top of nothing, you don't need it to be on top of paper or a div or anything like that, feel free to leave out uh, this table, compo uh, table container component. Now onto the table, you can see we're passing in one class name and that is just pretty much this table class. And all that is doing is giving the table a min width. So you see here, if I were to minimize the page, um, because we gave it a min width, as the table gets smaller and smaller and smaller and it gets lower than the min width, it will automatically add this scroll bar. So it doesn't condense everything because tables will look extremely bad. Um, and I can even show you guys if I were to, for example, edit this in code sandbox, tables look extremely bad if you don't give it a min width and the screen size is uh, really small. We have our min width set to 650 pixels here. and you should also know that the table actually has a built-in min width, min width. So if I were to try and change this for, to, for example, 10, um, <coughs> you'll see here that it's not actually going to let me go smaller. But you'll also notice that the graph sort of looks a bit different than if back when it was um, 650. For example, if I were to set the width to just 10, it won't actually go under the min width that is preset inside of Material UI, but you'll notice things start to sort of break. For example, these lines don't go all the way to the edges and these column names aren't properly spaced out. So it's recommended to always have a proper min width when you're using a table. Now, if we get back to the example uh, and we scroll down, so that is our table. We're using that. We have an ARIA label, which is pretty much just for accessibility purposes. You don't really need this. Um, and then the first thing we have here is our table head. And it's worth noting that the header of our table is pretty much just a row that has a bunch of columns um, or cells, as they call it in Material UI, um, that just have the names of every single uh, column that we have. So if we scroll down, we can see we have the head and then inside of our head, we are pretty much just passing in a row and each table cell is going to have the name of that cell. So we can see here our first table cell is dessert and we can customize it however we want. And then the next ones are the exact same, except we have align right. And if we were to go to table cell, we can see here um, the align property is pretty much just wherever we want the text inside of the cell to align within the div. So for our first cell, it is going to be nothing. So it gets defaulted to inherit. And I think on most browsers that is just left aligned. So for example, if I were to inspect element here and go into this, we can see that is going to be left aligned. However, we gave right aligned to everything else. So we can see here that for calories, the text is aligned on the right. If you wanted to change any of this, you would just pass it in. Um, depending on what you wanted to change it to. So the head is pretty simple and then we get to the body. So in the body it can get a bit confusing if you're less familiar with more recent React and JavaScript syntax. But all we're essentially doing here is the rows, uh, um, the, our rows variable is pretty much just a array filled with object. So when we map through it, the variable that we get here, which is row, is just going to be that giant object. And as we know, each element in that object has a name attribute, calories attribute, fat attributes, carbs attribute, and proteins attribute. And that's pretty much all that we're calling here. We make another row. We give it a key so that React doesn't give us, uh, doesn't yell at us and give us console warnings. And this is essentially just for React to know that each row is individual, which is something you normally have to pass into any map function. Um, and essentially, all we have is a row on the top level. And then all we do is we build every single cell depending on what we want it to be. So for example, we want the first cell that is being displayed in every single row to just be the name. So we pass in row.name. And then we pass in the same for calories, fat, carbs, and protein. And it's pretty simple and problematic. You're never having to define every single row one by one by one because you're sort of mapping through it in this programmatic way. And it gives you a lot of uh, control. As you can see here, we're still passing in a line. And that's essentially all that a basic table is. It is just essentially a header and then a body and the body and header both contain a row with cells inside of it. It's not too complex. And if I were to hide this and go to the next example, which is just a dense table, the only difference between this is for a dense table, if you go here and you see our table, we are passing in size as small. And if I go to the table API, you can see here there are two 
um, props that you can or two values that you can pass in for the size prop and that is small and medium when it's medium it will inherently give your cells and rows a lot of padding but when it is small it will sort of make your um, table look a lot more dense which in my opinion is a lot more readable it really just depends in the setting that you are trying to use it so that is the basics of the table. In the next couple of videos that I do on tables, we're going to go more into, for example, complex uh, things like styling the uh, rows and the header with different colors and also everything that you see in this big nutritions. Once again, if you found value in this video, please consider liking, subscribing, leaving a comment on what you want to see next. If I left anything out, uh, please let me know. And I hope you guys are all staying safe and thanks again for watching.